the vise handle came apart when I was about to loosen my vise because the pin came out. So what am I going to do? So as you can see, the, the pin came out of this vise for my uh, handle for my Char's vise. And I could have simply found another pin and put it in here, but I had been wanting to make a speed handle anyway. So in this episode, I'm going to make a speed handle. Here's the design that I came up with, and it's two parts. This is half inch thick aluminum, and then this is a, a handle that I ordered from McMaster that uh, should be a free spinning handle, and it's attached with a quarter 20 screw. So let's take a look at how I did this. I measured the existing handle and then I wanted to have some drill holes in here to relieve this edge because I couldn't get a perfectly straight edge. And this is what I've seen other people do and this is how I thought I'd set it up and I set it up using uh, 1 8 inch drills for this. Uh, currently um, I'm showing millimeters so that's why it says 3.175. Anyway, this is fairly straightforward design. Uh, what I decide to do in terms of making it, let me go and show you that process, is to, and I'll hide this part. So I started out with a fixture here, as you can see, and then performed uh, the operations to cut out the inner part here. So spot drill, drilling the holes along the edge, drilling the hole, starter hole for the quarter 20, drilling out a center section here, uh, so that I could just pocket these out. This is a finishing pass and then a chamfer along the inside, but I didn't put a chamfer on the, the outside because at this point I still had most of the material. So let me show you that. So I'll skip forward. And hide the, the model. So this is pretty much what I ended up with. And the question is, now how do I do the outside perimeter? What I decide to do is to create a fixture, which I will show you. So the fixture has these alignment bosses that should hold the speed handle itself in perfect alignment. And then I have holes that I've uh, drilled for 1024 so that I can use screws to hold this down. And you'll see me doing that when I mill this. And the idea of that is I can flip this part over fairly easily and champ for the other side and everything will be perfectly aligned. I could have done this with a set of soft jaws, but I decided to do it this way. And one of the reasons I decided to do it this way is because this material is seven inches wide and my vise is only four inches wide. So let's head to the machine and uh, I'll show you the process. The stock I'm using is about seven inches long and my vise is four inches wide. So you can see it's hanging out over the edge. I want to make sure that it's in the vise really tight. So I use a dead blow to hammer it down, make sure that the parallels are tight and then tighten it one little bit. And you can see I have to use a wrench instead of the handle. I want to square up uh, one end so that I have a good reference point. So I'm going to use the left side and this is easiest to do manually. So I just move it over to the side. And then what I discovered here is that I didn't have the part far enough to the right. So it couldn't make it all the way to the left. So I just move the stock a little bit to the right. I'm moving the spindle down so that the Z is just below the bottom of the part. And then once I have it set, I'm going to turn the spindle on to about 5,000 RPM, turn on the coolant, and then I'll move it to the right until it just touches the material. And you can hear it when it touches the material. And as soon as it touches the material, then I'll move it back and move it to the right about 10 thousandths of an inch. So there it is, touching the material. And then I'll move it back and then to the right 10 thousandths of an inch, and then I'll move it forward to clean up that face so that I have a nice clean edge for the Heimer edge finder. Now I probably don't have to clean up the whole edge, but you know, why not? It doesn't take that long. Next it's time to set the zero point to the left side, the back, and the top of the material. 
uh, and then all of the million is going to be based relative to this location. To set the top, I have to uh, set the offset from the table because that's where I have the zero point for all of my tools. So this is just measuring the difference between the table and the top of the part that I then enter into the control. I needed three drills for this part and I generally add the drills for each job that I do. I also use the upper range, so I'm putting these tools into slots 18, 19, and 20. And then what I need to do is uh, measure the offset for each of these drills, which you can see me doing here. First operation is spawning. I have a bunch of holes around the hexagon to provide clearance for the hexagon because the millet would otherwise leave round edges. Next stop is the 1 8 inch drill that I'll use to relieve the corners around the hexagon. And you'll see here there's a bit of a problem, which is it's way too high. And the reason is because I forgot to subtract 4 inches, which is the height of my tool height setter off of the bed. I fixed the tool offsets and then ran the program again, starting from the drill. And you can see this is working much better. Uh, the drill is doing pecking and working its way all the way through. I used the usual adaptive to clear out the hexagon, and then after this did a finishing pass around the walls. And then finally, the chamfer pass. Next, it was time to work on the fixture. And this is uh, right near the end of the adaptive. And you can see that it left a couple of pieces on there. And I'm not quite sure what happened because the simulation didn't show anything like this at all. It showed it completely cleaning it up. But uh, no problem, I just lowered the the cutter to the correct height and then manually moved it over and removed those pieces. The fit was pretty much perfect. I put it on and it didn't move around at all. So now I just need to tap the holes and then clamp it in place and now I can uh, mill the rest of the outside away and then do some chamfering and it should be, should be done. I've set the coordinate system so that uh, this is the bottom left back side. And so I want to pick that up first before I put the part on. Now that I have the coordinate set to right here, I'll put this on top. And then to hold it in place, I 3D printed a, a few caps that just go on top and then I can screw these in place. Uh, probably would have been better to use some thick, wa some uh, wide washers, but uh, I think this will be strong enough and this is something I can just print right away. I don't have to go to the hardware store to get some hardware. So that's the, the route that I went. So I'll just go ahead and uh, Tighten these down and then we can start the job. Yeah, and I can definitely see that this distorted when I, yeah, and this distorted as well, but uh, I think it'll be fine. I don't think it's going anywhere. I uh, clearly need to give it a little bit more uh, Z clearance, so I'm going to go back and uh, uh, work on that because it uh, pulled that screw out. It uh, had so much force. 
So I'm going to go change the program and then uh, try it again. You can see here that it also chipped the end mill. So I think this is the last 3 8 inch end mill, so I'm going to have to switch to the uh, quarter inch end mill. That means it'll take a little bit longer to uh, finish the job, but that's the way it is. The 1 8 inch Aluma Power end mill had no problems at all finishing this up. And as you'll see come up here, when it uh, goes around the corner and comes up to the screw, I changed the lift from 0.2, which wasn't enough, to 0.4. So now it has plenty of room and it doesn't hit the screw, which is a good thing. But here it's uh, doing the final uh, little bit, and then it's going to uh, switch to the finishing pass, which is it's doing right now. And I wasn't sure at first if the finishing pass was correct because it was a much lower frequency. Uh, I was using a, a lower spindle speed, but it turns out that it produced a really, really nice finish. And then finally switching to the chamfer tool and putting the chamfer on the outside edge of this side. At this point, I lost the audio. One of the things I'm struggling with is uh, for the wireless microphone that I'm using, I'm, it uses AA batteries. And sometimes the AA batteries, because they're rechargeable, ran out without any warning from the remote. Anyway, what I did here is I chamfered the middle one, and then I'm putting the hole down into the middle one, removing the outside ones, and then I'll chamfer the left and the right. So this allows me to get the chamfer just right uh, for all three openings on the top. And then once this is done, I can flip it over and then put the hold downs into the left and right. I decide to leave the middle out. Uh, and then I can chamfer the middle. Well, actually they're all chamfered, so I just need to chamfer on the outside edge and then the part will be done. I can pull it out, tap the quarter 20 hole on the right side and then put the handle in. So as you can see, it, it fits. It's a little bit loose, so I think I'm going to remake it with uh, better tolerances and smaller holes. But uh, you can see it works. And uh, well, it does bind up a little bit. So uh, it's going to need some work, but uh, not too bad. Now the other thing is, uh, you can see this. See, the other thing is the uh, you can see that the surface finish on the walls is just beautiful. It uh, turned out really well, so I'm, I'm quite happy with how that turned out. Here's the uh, finished speed handle. This is not the actual handle that I want. Uh, I couldn't find it. We moved into our house about two weeks ago, and it looks like uh, this handle is still in one of the boxes. So I 3D printed a replacement handle and used... Uh, a short screw to hold it in place so that at least I can start using it. And as you can see, it works really nicely. And then if I tighten it, I can move it to the other position and give it a good turn and it works great. I'm really happy with how the speed handle turned out. Uh, it, well, except that the fit is a little bit loose. So at least I have something that I can use now and that'll give me time to make a version two of the speed handle. I'm gonna use, instead of 1 8 inch drill, I'll probably use a 1 16th inch drill for the corners 
And then I think I'm going to tighten up the tolerances just a little bit and that'll give a better grip on the, the screw. So there are a lot of things I learned from this. One of them is I'm getting really comfortable using G-Wizard. Uh, I'm pretty much using the advice that G-Wizard gives me. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing is I use, I set the, the, the tortoise versus hare setting the slider to about the middle which uh, works really well on this machine. And then most of the time I just use the settings, use the values exactly as they're shown in G-Wizard and that works really re well. Now for the finishing pass with the one quarter inch end mill, I went at, at about half the RPMs that I'd planned to, but the surface finish turned out really nice. So I'm gonna have to look into that in a little more detail. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, please subscribe and comment below. See you next time.